Welcome everybody back to Washington Football Maniacs with our host, Greg Sykes, and myself, Brandon Scott. Today we're going to talk about moving. Uh, there's reports in the in the news that the owner of the Washington Capitals slash the Washington Wizards, Ted Leon, says is considering a move to Crystal City, Virginia. Now you probably ask yourself, what's it got to do with the Washington Commanders? Well, that will mark the second ownership group in DC Sports who's considering a move to the Commonwealth of Virginia. So we're going to look at two locations that have been rumored by the uh, Washington Commanders, one being Stafford County, Virginia, and the second being the original RFK site. So we're going to look at the pros and cons, and then definitely let us know what you guys think of the pros and cons, uh, which way are you leaning. So definitely um, like, subscribe, let us know how we did, and let us know in the comments what is your go-to move. Do you prefer Virginia? Going back to RFK? A lot of questions, a lot of answers. So we're going to dive right into it. Like I said, uh, uh, there are news reports in the news, obviously, um, that Ted Leonsis is the owner of the Washington Mystics, Washington Capitals, Washington Wizards. Uh, he's considering a move uh, to vacate Capital One Arena in what is now Chinatown, uh, northern part of D.C., to relocate to Crystal City, Virginia, which is kind of in the area of the Pentagon. So, you know, again, how, what's it got to do with the commanders? Well, you know, this is the second time ownership in, in DC sports has considered a move to, you know, the uh, Commonwealth of Virginia, which obviously if you look at the DMV, the DC, Maryland, Virginia area, the Commonwealth of Virginia has always been kind of the entity that had the most funding, you know, Commonwealth of Virginia has, you know, so we're going to look at the pros and cons. So we're going to start with Stafford. Now, uh, Daniel Snyder and his wife, uh, Tanya, uh, before they vacated ownership of the Washington commanders, but, land out in Stafford County for the uh, for you know on the chance that they could be approved for a stadium in Stafford County. Now um Greg what are some pros and what are some cons about a potential move to Stafford County, Virginia? Well I think you know definitely the pros um you probably have uh you probably have more funding in Virginia uh certainly um you know, you're probably going to have more backing, maybe more political backing now. Definitely that there's new ownership. Uh, well, soon to be new ownership. Um, <laughs> of course, Snyder wasn't going to have any backing anywhere that he was going to go. Maryland, uh, D.C., or Virginia. Um, but with Harris and his group, um, pretty much anybody will back him wherever he decides to go. Uh, you know, especially during this honeymoon phase, uh, he's going to have this his choice of of where he wants to build a stadium, really. Um, so I, I think it, there's probably more land um, associated with the Stafford location. Uh, there's probably also uh, not just for the stadium itself, but you're probably also looking at uh, developments of um, shopping and stuff like that around. Uh, which could be an economic boost in that area. Um, and that's something that I think um, a lot of these places are really looking at nowadays. It's, it's not just the stadium itself, but what can you build up around? You know, they're trying to make it into uh, almost like a, a, a mini city, so to speak. Um, uh, you know, uh, bringing in commerce and that sort of thing. Um, so I think that those uh, things can be a positive, you know, bringing in a lot of jobs into that area. Um, that's always a positive thing as well. Um, certainly, you know, the positive thing with Virginia, uh, and I can't really speak for the whole DMV area um, because originally I'm not from there. I am from Southern Virginia, um, which was heavily Redskins as well uh, when I grew up there, but um, I would say probably a good portion of, of Virginia itself um, was, was heavily Washington. And um, so, you know, I think they would definitely welcome uh, the Washington franchise into the state um, with that. Um, now, as far as, uh, you know, cons, uh, you know, no metro, uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, you know, that that's probably a big thing for a lot of folks. Um, you know, I never got to go to a game at RFK, unfortunately. I always wanted to, and 
I know a lot of folks have talked about being able to, uh, you know, we go to anywhere in DC, you know, you ride the Metro and, and things like that. That was always a, a big convenient thing. And so not having, um, you know, the ability to, to get on a Metro to go to the stadium uh, kind of hurts. For me, though, I, again, I, I don't live in an area where you have metros, and so I, I just, you know, I, I'm not used to that sort of thing, so that doesn't really bother me. Um, I think the other negative thing certainly would be um, when it comes to taxes and how much uh, of, of really a burden would that be for the taxpayers of Virginia, uh, especially in the, you know, the northern Virginia area and that, that area specifically and finally um you know just the increased amount of traffic in that area um you know that that's what a lot of people fear as well you build a big stadium like that you're going to get a tremendous amount of of traffic especially during the season and out you know of course you were you're going to assume that they're going to use it for more than just uh football they're going to use it for multi-purpose um a lot of other events going going into that stadium as well. So, you know, overall it, it's going to be built somewhere. So, um, you know, whether if it's Virginia, or if they get the RFK site or honestly, I don't know why. I just don't think Maryland is, is going to wind up having them. I think Maryland is the odd man out. And, you know, I mean, they got, they got the Ravens. They don't need two NFL teams. <laughs> so um and and i apologize for the maryland fans who are hardcore redskins fans commanders fans um but i just i just think that at, at this point it's it's really going to come down to rfk or virginia um now certainly my um uh, my my old timer in me wants them to go back to the RFK site uh, because I think they belong in DC. Um, but, you know, at the same time, if they get just an inch closer to me, um, I don't know how much actually it would be closer to me. I live in North Carolina. So um, either way, it's going to be a track, but um, you know, even if they're just 25 minutes closer to me, I, I'll vote for that. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a tricky assessment, man, because the, the pros, obviously, um, North of Virginia, if you look at the demographics of Virginia, um, the highest income areas of Virginia has always been North Virginia and the Tidewater area, which is Norfolk, Newport News, Hampton area. Um, so there's definitely, as far as taxes, I don't think that's too much of an issue because, like I said, a lot of money is in North of Virginia as far as uh, contracting government, a lot of money in North of Virginia, especially if you look at places like Roslyn right across the bridge from D.C., lot of money so i don't think that would be an issue i think that a big pro would be a modernized stadium you know maybe an indoor retractable roof um like you said shopping the area would be revitalized um and you know i think that's a big plus you know you're going to get a, an up-to-date high-tech stadium but and, and like i said that's a big plus I, I i think the negatives is just the logistics of trying to get people to the stadium because obviously people that live in prince george's montgomery county merlin they're going to go a little farther now um, people come from the city, you know, a lot of people that live in the city, you know, like most big cities on the East coast, you know, the Metro gets a lot of, a lot of commu commuters. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, are they going to be able to get Metro access to Stafford? And that's going to ask, you know, the Commonwealth of Virginia to, again, they're going to have to put money towards extending the Metro line. Cause if you, um, cause I'm, I'm actually, I'm not born, but I was raised in the Washington DC area. Um, I'm from Lowndes County, Virginia. So um, I'm very familiar with the, the economics and demographics of North Virginia and the DMV. And, you know, they just now extended, the, I believe, the Silver Line going to Loudoun County. So they're making efforts to kind of extend out the reach of Loudoun County, the reach Fairfax County, even go down. Because um, Stafford is actually going down uh, 95 South. You're going towards um, Woodbridge, Dale City, uh, Fredericksburg. Yeah. So I think there's potential there. I do think there's potential. But I think they have to keep in mind everybody as far as the fan base you know don't just look at the virginia residents even though i'm from virginia <laughs> um you got to look at people that come over you know you know i mean to me it would be a win because like i, I reside in virginia now you know i'm a virginian most of my life but 
um, you got to look out for your Maryland and DC residents. And yeah. so I think that's the, oh yeah, absolutely. So you have to yeah. look at that component. And really, so to me, the only con is that the logistics of getting people to, to a stadium. Now, obviously, you know, it's the Washington commanders. It's not the Virginia commanders. Uh, so, you know, again, looking at this new management group under Josh Harris, and then looking at Ted Leonsi as the owner of the Wizards, the fact that you have two major ownership groups that are looking to relocate shows there's a lot of potential and money in Northern Virginia. But then it's yeah. kind of disparaging when you look at DC. It's like, you know, to lose one team is one thing. You know, the um, Riskin slash football team slash commanders, um, they've been in uh, FedEx for, um, I don't know the exact years. You know what exact years they've been in FedEx? I think they started in FedEx, uh, was it 1997? Yep, or I think you're right. Somewhere I think it's right 97. There. So they've been there for a while. So, um, but you haven't seen that revitalization in PG County that you would want to see from having a stadium in that location. So, you know, I, I get the jobs and I, and I get that, but I think it was going to help mediate if they decide to go to the Virginia route is Metro access because in DC, it is key. It is key. I mean, you have federal employees that are taking the Metro. So, I mean, it's just the Metro is that important. Um, I don't know if you remember, I don't know how many years ago, man, it was uh, right around the time I got out of the military, man. I think it was 2012. They had an earthquake in Stafford, and it, it kind of shut down the whole city. And the metro was running about 15 miles. It, it shows how important the metro system is in D.C. You know, Absolutely. once the metro system was shut down, the whole city was shut down. So that's, yeah. that shows how important it is. So um, yeah. we're going to sl- we're gonna kind of slide into the next location, which is RFK, which – for all the old school fans or the original Redskins, know the glory years of winning the Super Bowl at RFK. I've never personally been to RFK. Um, I'm an I'm 85 baby, so <laughs> I vaguely remember the Super Bowl years. And so, unfortunately, most of my, you know, as a child up to my adult life has been under Dan Snyder. So you can imagine the lack of enthusiasm. But, um, <laughs> you, you, you know, when you talk to people, the, just mentioning the Super Bowl teams at RFK just brings so much magic to people. You know, how much yes. of a good time it was. But then towards the end, RFK, you know, people were actually scared to go RFK towards the end because, yeah. you know, it was just an older design. It was more of a 1970s design. So um, the big obstacle to the commanders moving back to RFK was the fact that, one, Dan Snyder was our owner, and two, that the land surrounding it is federal land. But with the new ownership in place, just waiting on to be finalized, you know, D.C. has shown that they are open to kind of talk about um opening that land up to being used as a stadium so i know it's hypotheticals but hypothetically we get approved to go back to rfk what are some pros and what's some cons with that assessment well i mean certainly the pros everybody feels like it, it just feels right for the team to be in dc um you know it, it's you just feel like well okay this is going to be the best for DC fans, Virginia, Maryland. Um, I mean, this is where they need to be. Um, and then of course, um, you know, the past glory years you mentioned, um, I, I was born in the seventies. So I was lucky enough to, to witness all of the glory years. And although I never got to go and watch a game in person, just, you know, at least watching it on TV, you, you could at least feel it through the TV, right? I mean, that stadium was magical. And um, so being able to have the the team under new ownership back in that RFK site in a new updated stadium uh, would just, it, it just seems right. Um, and I don't think that hardly anybody would, honestly uh, would object to that um i wouldn't i mean honestly uh, i would if i had the money i even though i'm in carolina i'd probably buy a season tickets you know just just for the opportunity to be able to to be right smack dab in dc being able to watch uh, washington there you know uh, playing on sunday um, so, I mean, that, that's the biggest thing, of course, you know, and you mentioned earlier, being able to have the, the metro access um, is, is very vital. Um, it's just so much uh, more convenient. Um, you know, I mean, it, it's just there, there's a lot of conveniences to it. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know if, if you know, I'm wondering nowadays as far as the size of the stadium, like, 
how much of the land would they be able to to need more so than what the RFK site, original site, um, or the original stadium had? Because obviously now they're building stadiums bigger, uh, trying to hold more uh, folks. So, you know, would it be able to be enough land uh, for a new stadium, a new state of the art stadium. Um, that's, that's something to kind of think about as well. Um, would it be enough land or would it just be kind of like what, what I liken to, um, the, the Panther stadium and, uh, uh, Charlotte, you, you don't really have parking. Well, I guess you may, you may have a parking lot, but you don't really, uh, you usually have to park downtown and, and parking garages, so maybe you don't worry about uh, a parking lot and you use that whole area uh, for, for the new stadium. I mean, I don't know how that's going to look. Um, and I, you can always build up, but you don't want to build up so much that suddenly the people who are up in the nosebleeds, I mean, you know, everything looks like ants on, on the stadium or, you know, in, in the, the field. So, I don't know. Those may be cons as well as far as can do you have enough land? Do you have enough area there to really uh, build? Uh, and then, of course, what type of red tape do you have to go through? Is it going to really be that simple that because it's no longer Dan Snyder, suddenly, um, you know, it it's all magically goes away and then the keys are handed over? Uh, it's probably not that simple. Um, even if it is going to be Josh Harris. So, um, and we're, we're getting pretty close. Um, I think was it 2027 that the lease is up for FedEx. So, um, and it's going to take a, a couple of years or so to build a new stadium. So it's all, all going to have to come together pretty quickly. Um, so I don't know if, if the RFK site is going to be available, I think they're going to have to make a move on it pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah. You hit the nail on the head when you talked about uh, the new ownership coming in. I, and there's kind of two things I'm going to bring up real quick. Is uh, Number one, money talks. You know, like I said, Northern Virginia is <laughs> lots of money in Northern Virginia, man. Like I said, you have government, you know, agencies in Northern Virginia. You have contracting companies, you know, Raytheons, and, you know, the, the, the list goes on. How much business is conducted in Northern Virginia, um, especially in the Pentagon, Crystal City area. Uh, I mean, the list goes on. Um, and that's one factor. Because if you look at D.C., if you look at the area where RFK is, um, the area is, is kind of underdeveloped. And while if you look at the, um, what do you call it, the, the, the Naval Yard area where Nationalist Park is and Acacia, you know, Nationalist Park has revitalized the area. You know, now you have Audi Field over there, you know, home of the D.C. Defenders, um, the D.C. United. Um, they're putting restaurants in there. You, they have revitalized that area of D.C. So. You know, I think the funding is getting there. You know, you're seeing, because like I said, um, 15, 20 years ago, Anacostia was a rough part of the city. Um, anybody who's from D.C. knows that Anacostia was a pretty rough part of the city. Um, but now if you go down there, I mean, you got shops, restaurants. I mean, it's revitalized. So I think D.C. is trying to work on that. They're trying to revitalize the area beyond because, I mean, and I think the stadium could help with that. But the second thing, you know, people forget before Dan Snyder was around, you know, under the previous owner, Jack and Cook, man, he had connections to the government. He had connections to politicians. This was, man, I mean, and I'm just hearing this is going off stories and just research, you know, how powerful ownership of, at the time, the Riskins was. You know, you had government officials come to the games. You know, he had yeah. a lot of leeway when it comes to government policy in the district. You know, Dan yeah. Snyder, and, and it was said that when Dan Snyder took ownership of Riskins at the time, Washington football team commanders, that he kind of just threw all that out of the window, you know, with his shenanigans and his stupidity, that you took an organization where ownership had a lot of power. People don't realize how much power Jack Kent could have had in D.C. And Snyder destroyed that. So the leverage is gone. So what? Did, so you really hit the nail on the head. What is the leverage that the federal government opens that land up to be used as a stadium because this new ownership is going to, have to come in. They're going to have to rebuild a lot of burn bridges and they're yeah. really going to have to work that much harder to legitimize this franchise. Because again, this franchise 
it's just it's just sad, man. Because like I said, I was I was a child. I remember the Super Bowl years, but not you know enough to really have been you know go to a game and like. But I knew. And in looking at this franchise, just how low we have gotten under Dan Snyder. You know, all the leverage is gone. You know, the reputation took a hit. So I think that bringing the stadium back to RFK, man, definitely could bring jobs in the area. Because like I said, I see it with Nats Park. You know, I, I'm a DC sports guy. So baseball season, I'm going to O's and Nats games, you know, basketball, Wizards, you know, football, Commanders, and now the Defenders. But um, so going to Nats games, you see the re revitalization that it, is had on the Anacostia area and the Naval Yard and the waterfront. I mean, the, you know, it's just incredible. So I think it would be a big win. But then again, the con is how much leverage do, does this new ownership have to, to get that done? I, they, I don't see them having that much leverage. I think eventually in the end, and I hate to say this, because I would love to see this team go back to RFK. You know, just driving yeah. to FedEx Field this last previous season, and you can, you can see RFK from the Beltway. And it's just like, man, it just it would be nice to just have because if you look at the how it's designed, I believe the design it, it goes straight to the capital. I mean, it's just it's 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 a great area. I mean, it's just ah, oh, it just breaks your heart how far we've gone, man. But I think oh, in the man. end, I think in the end, man, money talks. I I I hate I hate to say this, but I think that if they do move, it's going to be in Virginia I, because I just yeah. don't see the DC having that power to influence the federal government to open that land up. And this ownership just does not have the leverage. And we have to rebuild, again, rebuild so many burn bridges and rebuild the reputation of this franchise. So I think that money talks, and they're going to end up going to Virginia. So <laughs> I think, and I think really we win either way. It's just how much is Virginia and how much is this no ownership group going to appeal to the whole fan base? Because like I said, you know, a lot of fans coming from, Prince George's County, Montgomery County, even going towards Baltimore. There's still fans of this franchise close to Baltimore. And yeah. how do you appeal to them? The metro system. So if, if Virginia is willing to extend the metro line, I, I say go for it. Because you're going to get a high, you're going to get a a really improved stadium. Because FedEx, let's be real, man. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, last, I've been a season, <laughs> oh, man. I mean, I've been a season ticket holder for the last two years, man. And I pride myself on that because – I remember the days when you had to be on a waiting list to be a season ticket holder. Yeah. Though now it's like, hey, you want one? You want one? <laughs> Who wants season oh, yeah. tickets? <laughs> I, so let me tell you. Let me tell you on that. I remember, and, and this was this was some time ago because I was still uh, in Virginia, um, and the Redskins called me. And I, at first, I was like, this has to be a joke. Um, but I think I, I may have signed up or something like that for, you know, Hey, yeah, I'll sign up, you know, and see if I get called for a chance to have season tickets. And they actually called me. I think I want to say this was like around 2007 or 2008. Um, it's when I had my house there and yeah, they, they called me more, more than once and trying to get me to, finance um season tickets and so i'm like even then you know i mean we're we're talking how many years ago right so yeah that, that shows you how long it's been that you know the old fable of we've been sold out for years how that went out the window a long time ago <laughs> Yeah, I, I, look, I'm gonna keep it real, man. I'm gonna see it over because they have a payment plan. So I'm just gonna keep it real with you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's on the way. You know, I I would have to mortgage it for like 30 years. I think maybe I don't know. <laughs> I mean, honestly, if you live in the area, I would recommend it. And I'm gonna say this because if you look at the ind individual prices of tickets without being a season, uh, season ticket holder, I mean, a Dallas game, man, you could easy spend over thousand dollars. Go, I oh, mean, because because people forget. Look, and that and that's just another sad thing about this franchise man is that people forget that dallas and washington if not the number one is one of the top rivalries in the history of sports yes. i mean you, you don't see many other rivalries that rob that rival this rivalry and i know i said the word yeah. like three or four times but you just don't see it you know this that i mean that's how important this matchup is man and it just it didn't it doesn't hold the same like it used to so i'm hoping that this new management comes in and revitalize just that fire because I think that look, Dan Snyder's gone. I mean, we're on the road to him being gone. So you're going to see a lot of fans come back. You know, you're going to see a lot of fans come back. And I think that, you know, obviously 
the Washington, D.C. area is different than it used to be 20, 25 years ago because you have so many federal employees moving in the area um, from other areas. And so many businesses are and, and you mentioned Charlotte. You know, my wife's from Charlotte. Charlotte is actually like the new Washington, D.C. area now because it's, it's growing so large in Charlotte right now. Yeah. You know, you, you mentioned yeah. the stadium, uh, Bank of America Stadium. The fact that so many businesses such as Bank of America now has its headquarters in Charlotte. So it kind of compares. But I think that with this new flux in population, it's, it's, it's money, it's potential. You know, because you can bring so many people to the stadium, especially if you have a high tech stadium. So I think that's why in the end, you know, Virginia wins. I think that Virginia is going to be the place where if we decide to move out of the area of the District of Columbia, that it's going to be Virginia because money talks. They have the funding to do it. And they have, I believe I, I got a research. And we're probably going to talk about it the next episode, but I believe that they approved a bunch of stuff to get this along the lines of getting a stadium done because they see the potential of it. There's money in North Virginia. But getting back, you know, it's just, I, I, but a part of me wants to see DC make that push. Come on, try. Because can you imagine building on top of R RFK, man? Just oh, the magic, just in the soil, man, to bring some winning ways yeah. to this team. <laughs> so I know, I know. You'd almost feel like, um, j just like we felt that they they probably built uh, FedEx on an Indian bur burial ground, which uh, has haunted us for the last twenty plus years. Uh, you would feel like building back on the RFK site would be the reverse. You know, you're you're building on all of the um lower year ghosts right and and so we would in a sense make up for for the last 25 plus years that this team has has been snake bitten so but yeah i agree with you i think um honestly i think virginia has the money um and you know the, the other thing I, that quickly wanted to mention about dc i would like to know the um I guess the statistics as far as how many within the DC are born and bred there, how many are transplants, right? Uh, because that plays a, a, a big part in it too. Um, you don't, you know, when you have a, a city that becomes a melting pot of a lot of transplants, um, they, they are not always going to, uh, well, I will say this, often they're going to bring in their, you know, their fandom of the teams that they liked from wherever they came from. Uh, it's not very often that they're going to embrace the home team there. And um, I say that just to say that often, you know, cities like D.C. and, and other cities, you don't have nowadays uh, a more people than not, um, you know, being natives there, uh, you often have people who are transplants. And I guess that might be also a deciding factor as far as, uh, whereas like maybe more out in the uh, suburbs of into, you know, Virginia and those areas like that, you probably are going to have a, a li little bit of a higher, um, population of those who grew up in, in those areas maybe. And so that might be more of a deciding factor possibly. I, I don't know. Uh, then again, uh, who, you know, I may not know what I'm talking about, but it just, it, it, it kind of makes sense uh, at least, you know, I mean, I'll just tell you living in Greensboro. Um, I found that even though it, it's probably on more of the smallish side of cities um there is probably more people living here who are not from here uh yours truly than there are who grew up here so um you know you so if they had a sports franchise that was in greensboro you may not necessarily have a lot of people who support that because they're not from here so I, I think just to say that that um, it may be that Virginia wins after all, just because I think overall the whole state, uh, if you take a poll, there are going to be more Washington commanders than anything else, honestly. And maybe, maybe even including uh, the actual District of Columbia. Uh, who knows? I would like to see – I'd like to see an actual poll. 
of, you know, poll everybody in D.C. You know, if you're a sports fan, do you like the hometown team, whether if you're from there or not, you know, just curious. Yeah, but unfortunately, I think people will be surprised at the results because there are a lot of Cowboys fans in D.C., which always broke my heart. But um, oh, kind of. Oh, I know it. it, it, I, it a whole nother Whole another conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, one thing I want people to realize real quick before we roll, man, is that it's not unheard of to have your team in another state. The Giants and the Jets playing New Jersey. Jersey. So, I mean, yeah. you know, you see a lot of that. I mean, if you go to Philly, you know, the, um, the, the, all their major sports teams, all their stadiums are kind of nearby each other, but they're out there by the airport. They're, they're kind of separate from, you know, the city center. So, you know, you can have a team that's kind of in an – because this is the D.C. metropolitan area. So, I mean, Virginia has always been a very important, just like Maryland, um, very important part of the D.C. area. So it's just not unheard of. But, you know, it's, so you, you do see it with other teams. Just look, money talks. You know, the Commonwealth of Virginia is just the, the money's there in North Virginia. It has been. So, I mean, North Virginia has been the most growing, the fastest growing area in, in America since I was a child, man. And it's always been that way. So that's why I think it wins in the end. But I would like to see the leadership as far as the local government of D.C. really take a Take a chance, you know, kind of push your agenda and say, look, we re we revitalized the waterfront. So you can revitalize the area with a stadium. You know, I mean, you do see a lot of people like for right now, FedEx, a lot of people from PG work at FedEx. So, you, again, like you said, is, is, is a job placement. You know, you have people in the local area that have a job that's going to be there. So I think it's a win win either way. Just to me, just knowing how the DC area rolls money talks, man. And I think in yeah. the end, Virginia wins it. And it, if you see Virginia yeah. get both the commanders and the daggone wizards, <laughs> I mean, that's going to say something, man. And I think that's going to have a ripple effect as far as this, you know, we're not talking about politics, but I think it's going to ha definitely have a ripple effect as far as Merlin and the DC local government, as far as what they're trying to do, because you lose two major ownership groups, that's going to, I mean, that's going to sting to a certain degree. So that's kind of where I'm at. Um, before we roll, Greg, um, you have anything else you want to go over, man? I'll, I'll just, I'll just tell, say this. I'll vote for the Washington commanders to just move a little bit further into Virginia, into Blacksburg. So that way I can come up on Saturdays to watch my Hokies <laughs> play and I'll stay overnight and then watch the, uh, the commanders play on Sunday. And then I'll head back to Carolina after that. So, um, I'm sure I'm the only one who votes for that. <laughs> well, I hate to say, man, my mama's uh, originally from West Virginia, so I had to roll with WVU, oh, Lord. man. She's Mountaineer, so, right? Man, look, we had some good games in the Big East yes, back in the day. Man. I'm yeah. just saying, back when it was uh, Virginia Tech, uh, WVU, and Miami, oh, come on. Yeah. Man, that was good. You know, that, that was also the time when, you know, we played Merlin every year. We played East Carolina every year. So, so now, you know, like I said, that's a whole nother conversation because now, you know, the, the conferences, you got, I believe what the U uh, USC is in what we're going into big 12 next year. I think so. Yeah. It's, it's, it's craziness. Cause um, West Virginia is in the big 12. So logistically it doesn't make sense, especially recruiting. No. But again, that's a whole nother conversation. So um, we could go ahead, go ahead yeah. and roll there. <laughs> we may have to start a new channel. <laughs> oh man, just yeah, just to talk about the dag on NCAA, man. But that's right. now we're gonna go ahead and um roll there. But we definitely appreciate you guys. Like, subscribe, definitely comment below, hit that notification button so you guys get notified when you get dope videos just like this. So definitely appreciate you guys and hope everybody has a good evening. See you guys on Sunday. Take care and peace. Peace. Hey, you stayed until the very end. Thank you so much. Watch another one right now.